Hey, what's up YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing channel. Today I bring you guys a very very short video. Consider this to be an extra video, okay? After all, it is pretty much extra footage from my collaboration with uh, Tim Galati and my friend Mike Caruso, day one up in New York. <laughs> I mean, I thought about this video very carefully, okay? Truth be told. And on one hand, I thought I have so much footage out there, right? I don't necessarily need to portray these things on YouTube. But then on the other hand, I thought, you know, this was the last spot that we hit on day one of my collaboration with him. There were a lot of memories made there. We did catch different species of fish, you know, it was kind of fun. Just not enough footage to make a video on its own, right? But then, ah, I, I really thought it would be a shame if this footage never really saw you know, the light of YouTube out there, right? Which is why I decided to make this video. Before we get to get, before we get to see the sketches, okay, of the extra footage from day one, which is pretty much Tim Galati, Mike Caruso, and I exploring the Susquehanna River, okay? Uh, let me just give a brief summary of our trip so far. After all, I published two videos on my YouTube channel already, and there are still plenty of videos to come, okay? So as you guys, if you guys watched right, my, my two videos that I published just recently, you pretty much know the main idea of it. We started today um, at this place called the Otsilic River, where Tim Galati got a nice smallmouth bass on a double jointed jitterbug. He did a great job, we explored there. I caught myself a few small smallmouth bass, you know, it, it was great. And then we jumped places from the Otsilic to the Tayof Nioga River. That is the video where you guys saw that, for God's sake, right, we had to go through a lot of junk to get to the spot. I mean, literally, we had, <laughs> we went through thorns, all right, we went through seven minutes each, we went through a little channel that was made by beavers, but, you know, team did get a few nice smallmouth over there, I got plenty of ding smallmouth bass. In the end, I did fail miserably at multi-species angling, okay, because that was pretty much the only fish. Uh, that I caught there, right, the smallmouth bass. Then we hopped to the third spot of the day, right, which is also in the previous video, the Shenango River. That is where <laughs> Tim Galati kind of went tug on us, you know, and uh, that, that was the tug life intro, right? He caught a lot of fish, even though we were using the same setup, you know, he caught a lot of fish, I didn't catch a lot of fish, I think my friend Mike didn't catch a single fish, so I mean, it was... It was brutal, you know, he really kind of is cool us up, like he, we learned a lot from that experience, you know. And this video right here with the extra footage is what happened after that. After we left the Shenango River, we pretty much went to the upper portion of the Susquehanna River and we explored a little bit. I didn't have enough footage to turn this into a whole video, which is why, you know, I decided to turn this into a documentary video kind of thing, you know. So anyways, let's enjoy this video, let's enjoy the sketches in this video, let's see what we have here for you guys. Sketch number one of this video is actually very, very interesting. Not only interesting, it is a little bit surprising as well, okay? In this sketch, in, on, the, on the Susquehanna River, my friend Mike Caruso lands the fish that he really, really wanted to land on this trip. And, uh, you know, it is intriguing, it is surprising in a sense that even before we got off to, uh, up to New York, you know, my friend Mike and I, we spoke and he told me, you know, like, Leo, I really wanted to catch this fish there because I have never caught it before. So I contacted Tim Galati, you know, we spoke and I was like, Tim, is it possible for us to land some of these fish because my friend really wants to land one? And Tim was like, you know, it is not quite the season yet, so I can't promise anything you know so this sketch is very special i definitely didn't want to leave it out because you know my friend he, he mike he really goes out there and he catches that one species you know that he was really targeting up there so let's check it out nice what you got whoo fish not bad Not bad. We got Mike here redeeming himself. Good job, man. What is that? 
That not, that's not as molly though, is it? Oh, Holy cow, dude, it's a walleye. Yeah, it's the fish you wanted to catch, yeah. man. I need a photo here. Oh, dude, he's bleeding. Oh, we swallowed it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Tim. Tim, what is the what is the crew on limit for walleye here? Is the what? Crew on limit. The what? The crew. Like, what size can we take? Because that one is. And five. Because that one's bleeding a bit. Do you think that's fifteen? Let me hold it. No, this one is bleeding quite a bit, man. I don't, I don't think it's gonna survive. I think it's 15. You have a measurement yeah, tape? Yeah, I do. But yeah, it's yeah. It's gonna be close. It's oh, probably, the rod? Yeah. Probably 15 and a quarter, 15 and a half. Oh, man. Yeah. Move, move your thumb a little so I can see the, okay. Yeah, 16. It's 16. Nice. Okay, 16, 16. That's good, cause I mean, oh yeah, this one was bleeding a lot, anyways. You know, he's wallowed pretty take deep. A photo of me with it. Of course, of course, we take a photo. We gotta keep this fish, folks. You know, this fish was bleeding quite a bit. You know, take photo, and uh, that's gonna be dinner. I've talked to people who, right in this area, who've seen 30 yeah. inches. Nice, another one. Yep. Dude, you are on the walleye. Is that a walleye? Looks yep. like it, yeah. Smaller one. Wow, man. It's about to <sighs> pop off, Mike. Careful. <laughs> now now you Barely found hooked. now you found your vocation, bro. You are the walleye killer. Yeah. yeah. Nice job, man. Nice job, dude. Yeah, dude, maybe 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 they are just yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, why not? Bring it up. Let's measure it. Give it a look. Killing it on the EP series, huh? Wow, that's a beautiful fish, man. That is definitely a beautiful fish. Gorgeous, man. Congratulations, man. Thank you. So as you guys saw, you know, that was that was pretty exciting, right? He landed not only one, but actually two of them, which I thought it was amazing because, you know, I fished there for the rest of the day and I landed zero and team, he landed zero of the walleye either you know so i mean that was pretty exciting and if you guys were wondering right the first walleye it was past 15 inches it was 16 inches all three of us confirmed there on the spot so tim took that fish home to eat right don't forget to harvest selectively when you are out there fishing in other words you know if you can take the fish home if the law allows it and you see that the fish is bleeding right it got deep hooked right just take it home and eat it. If, if the fish is not edible, use it as fertilizer. But you see what I'm saying here, right? Harvest selectively. If this fish is going to die already and you can take it, do it a favor and use it as a resource. Don't just waste it. That would be really, really bad. <laughs> All right, let's talk about sketch number two. Then. In this sketch, there's something that I would like to emphasize, right? Uh, because this sketch is directly related to extreme fillet fishing you know recently in these last two new york videos i have had a lot of video come here on the channel and just give me some constructive criticism on how to catch bigger smallmouth bass and i mean i take those constructive criticism very well i truly appreciate people who come here on the channel and tell me listen man you should do this 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 and that if you want to catch bigger fish you should do this 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 and that if you want to accomplish more things when it comes to the sport i truly appreciate that okay keep doing that because i truly enjoy it and i do answer them right when i have time but what i want to discuss right here is a little bit uh, more about the goals of extreme fully fishing right which are directly related to the second sketch uh, multi-species angling you know you guys got to realize, right, if you guys haven't realized yet, that the extreme in extreme fillet fishing doesn't really come from sizes, okay? In other words, the name of this channel, Extreme Fillet Fishing, is not extreme because I catch big species of fish or big fish per se, okay? It is not extreme because I go out there and I catch trophy fish. The reason why I named this channel Extreme Fillet Fishing, and even before the channel, right, my blog is called Extreme Fillet Fishing, the name I included Extreme in it is because I am not bounded by species. I am not bounded 
by location. And that is what makes my fishing extreme, okay? In other words, I'm not a bass angler. I'm not just a bass angler. Or I don't just go out there and I target muskies. I, I'm not just a walleye angler. I'm not just a freshwater angler. I'm not just a saltwater angler. I am not bounded by species of fish. My goals is I go there, I go out there, and with whatever I have, whatever gear I have, right, I try to catch as many different species of fish as possible from different places. That is the goal of extreme fully fishing, and that's why extreme fully fishing is extreme. The point number two that I made earlier, right, that I am not bounded by spots. I don't fish at the same spots all the time. Besides an angler, I am an explorer. I go out there and I explore new places. And because of that, because I am constantly exploring, because I am constantly going to new places and recording which species of fish are in those waters, this is what makes extreme fillet fishing extreme. So, you know, a lot of people come here on the channel and they comment, right? Like, oh, Leo, you're not going to get anything big using that inline spinner. Leo, you're not going to get anything big using the gold minnow. I want those people, I want you guys who commented like this to keep in mind that this is not a trophy fish channel. This is an exploring and recording and catching different types of fish type of channel. This is what I do, and I love doing so. So when people come here on the channel, uh, either on the respectful way, right, you should use this, 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 and that, and give me some constructive criticism on catching bigger fish, or the people who come to this channel in a quite disrespectful way and call me the, the dink master, right, or they tell me I only catch flare fish. Both of you, you gotta understand that I'm very proud. I'm very, very proud of catching smaller species of fish. As a matter of fact, I am very proud in catching any type of fish out there. I don't discriminate. If you guys <laughs> watch my videos here on Extreme Fully Fishing, right, you see how excited I get when I pull one bluegill from a new place that I've never been to before. And I'm just like, folks, check this out. It is a bluegill. It is the Lepomis macrocutus. And why do I say those things? Because I am extreme fully fishing. Because my job, my ideals, what I do is I go out there and I record different species of fish from different places. After I catch that one bluegill from that new place, it excites me. Because now I know that in that body of water, you have the bluegill. So for me, as an angler and explorer, this is what I do and this is what defines my channel. Of, of course, not to mention that the channel has an educational approach to it, right? I'm constantly telling you guys, harvest selectively, right? Don't practice non-point source pollution. In other words, don't litter, don't over harvest, have the proper fishing etiquette, respect private property, respect other anglers, and so on. So in the end, we have a community of multi-species angler who anglers who fish really well who don't really really discriminate between species of fish right no ideas of trash fish no ideas of raw fish and we have a community that is united a community that is responsible and a community that fishes in a positive way anyways the second sketch here in this video i've talked too much i've talked for about six minutes but anyways, the second sketch in this video is where I go on the Susquehanna with my inline spinner, my Johnson inline spinner, and I, I just try to catch different species of fish to record it on my database, you know? So, you know, I can show people that these different species of fish are in the river. And I actually fail at it miserably, okay? So let's, let's take a look at it. Thank you. There's a bunch of little guys that kept attacking me right here. Yep. Oh yeah, I need a little guy. That's right. Come up here. We need to record you for the good old Susquehanna River here. Let's see. Yep. All right. Yep. Beautiful. Yes, I just need one photo with you. All right. 30 seconds of fame here on YouTube. And then I'm going to release you real quick. Okay, little bass. All right, fish. You did your job. Go back to the river.
บายบายเราได้ปลาที่นี่ซึ่งไม่ใช่ปลาสมาร์ลีมีเยอะมากสมาร์ลีในสุสควาฮานาแต่ผมใช้ปลาสีน้ำเงินสปินเนอร์ที่จะหาปลาอื่นๆของปลาที่ไม่ใช่ปลาสมาร์ลีนะครับและความเสียหายก็ไม่มีปลาสมาร์ลีในปัจจุบันผมใช้ปลาสมาร์ลีในปัจจุบันทิมกาลาดีบอกฉันว่ามีปลาสมาร์ลีในปัจจุบันและความเสียหายก็ไม่มีปลาสมาร์ลีในปัจจุบันทิมกาลาดีบอกฉันว่ามีปลาสมาร์ล And there you go. You know, as you guys just saw, I, I failed miserably at it. You know, not only this time at the Susquehanna River, but many other different places in Upper New York. I went there with a gold minnow. I went there with an inline spinner. And sometimes you end up only catching one species of fish. You know, which for me, as a multi-species angler, is not very exciting. Now, I would like to point out before we go for the last sketch of the day, right? That everyone out there in the community has a different type of excitement. Everyone out there pursues different things, right? I mean, I I told you guys this is a channel where I focus on multi-species angling, right? If you guys are looking for trophy fish, there are plenty of channels out there who focus on trophy fishing, right? Here in Philadelphia itself, you have Sea Money Fishing, Chris McIntyre, right? You have Tim Galati, who I did the collaboration with in New York. You have black tip age in Florida. You have all these different types of people that gather adrenaline rush, pretty much from catching big species of fish and trying to break the records, right? But like I said, I would like to point out in this channel that my adrenaline rush is when I go out there to this place that I've never been to and I explore it and I catch all these different types of fish that I record in my logs. You know, and what makes me even more excited is when I go there and I catch a fish that I have never caught before. In other words, a, a species of fish that I have never seen or never touched. You know, that excites me. That is my adrenaline rush. So remember, what makes extreme p o l y fishing extreme is not, oh, I got a 20 pounder today. Oh, I got a 40 pounder. I got a monster. You know, I'm the best. It's not like that. What makes extreme fly fishing extreme is always to have the will, the will to go out there and explore new places, break your boundaries, break your barriers, go be beyond the horizon and explore what is out there. Be an explorer, and more than an explorer, right? Catch different types of fish. Don't discriminate because every fish is unique, and every fish has its own role. In nature, in other words, there are there are no such things as trash, a s trash fish or raw fish. Okay, there are only different species of fish out there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the last sketch of the day. Third and last sketch of the day is about a puddle of water that I found right next to the Susquehanna River. I have here here with me my phone because I posted this photo on Instagram. When I was doing the collaboration up there, this photo was actually taken by my friend Mike Caruso. And see, I posted this on September September 18. I don't know how well you guys can see, but I posted this on September 18th on Instagram, and I asked people, "This photo here will be part of an upcoming video. This video right now, of course." Question: How many fishes you think I pulled out of it? You know, give it a guess. And now I'm gonna read some of the answers. Okay, we have we had 98 replies over there on my Instagram, so I'm gonna read some of them for you. Okay, uh, Cody Benlock says five to six. Joe's PH says eleven. Yano says fourteen. Tiger Boom eight. Bass Assassin nine. Owens Waverly two. Anyways, you got all different kinds of answers right here. Jared Coger said. 29. All right, and there were some people here who actually said zero. Rick Nanda says zero. Donald Turnbull says zero. Cody Petrovsky says zero. You know, and this is actually uh, the the fun part of this video, right? This is the last sketch of the day. It is this puddle of water that I found in the right next to the Sus Sus Susquehanna River. 
and I decided to do some multi spacing in it using the gold middle. And this is the funny part, right? I pulled out of the there, actually the answer to the question, right, is seven, okay? I pulled out of that little puddle of water that is not connected to the main river, seven fish, okay? Fishes, I should say, right? Because different species of fish, plural, fishes, okay? And this is the funny part. Out of the seven, six of them were green sunfish, the Lepomis cyanellus. And Tim Galati, when he saw that, he was so surprised. He was awed because he was like, Leo, I, I fish here for years and I have caught only like four or five green sunfish in my entire lifetime here. And suddenly, out of that little one puddle of water that probably anglers never even thought of fishing at because, you know, it's stagnant water, right? Disgusting water. I pulled out six green sunfish, more than he pulled out in his lifetime fishing up there, you know? So I thought this was really cool. I thought, you know, this is part of what multi-species fishing is all about. So anyways, let's take a look at sketch number three. It's gotta be something here, right? What we got? Is it a new species? What is this? Second species of the day, I finally decided to do some multi-species angling with the gold minnow. Now we got a green sunfish from the Susquehanna River. My first one ever from the Susquehanna, species number two of the day. All right. What? I just got a little green sunfish here. A little what? Green sunfish. Red? Green. Green? Yeah. You got a green sunfish? Yeah. Those are rare here, dude. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Going back. Boom. Second species of the day. All right, let's see. Any different type of sunfish there? Oh, you're fishing that little, that little. Uh -oh. Yeah. He just couldn't reach. Look, another green sunfish, man. I can't believe that. And this is a beauty, man. This is a fatty for a green sunfish. When you find one, you find one. That is crazy. Check that out. Bye bye. Good old Susquehanna. Oh, dude, be careful. Yeah. I was going to tell you. Oh, wait a moment. That's one I didn't see today. <laughs> Not a small mouth bass, but a small large mouth bass. <laughs> oh, dude, this is golden, man. This is what I call micro fishing to its best. Damn, man, nothing makes me happier than seeing a different species of fish. No kidding, go. Survive, bass. Don't get eaten. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave you guys, you know, with this for today. As I mentioned, you know, it is a short video in a sense that there's not a lot of fishing, but with all the talk, talking and blabbling, you know, this made it a long video anyways. You know, you guys know extreme fully fishing, right? Leo Shane, man, I talk too much. This is just the way I am, all right? <laughs> anyways, I'm gonna leave you guys here with the conclusion for the first day that I actually filmed on that day. And besides that, I'm just gonna tell you this right now. There are some very exciting videos coming up on the channel. I haven't forgotten about the tank feeding video. I am going to make that. I am going to be uploading it. I just don't know when. I have a few more videos coming up from the Team Galati collaboration up in New York. I will be posting them when I can. I have one collaboration with Sea Money Fishing. Uh, it's a video on flathead catfish. I'm going to be posting it. I don't know when, okay? And I have an awesome video coming up on the 2nd of October, October 2nd, okay? About a new soft plastic coll collection from Aerotaco. It's gonna be a blast. You know, I go out there, I record, I test them, and I truly, truly love those soft plastics okay i'm not saying this because i'm sponsored by the company i'm saying this because i have tested them myself and they actually do excel in terms of durability how they look action everything okay so i'm sure you guys will enjoy that very much so you know if you guys follow extreme fully fishing on social media either snapchat instagram facebook whatever there will be still lots and lots and lots of things coming up on the channel 
The only thing that I feel a little bit sorry about is my lack of availability, right? Unfortunately, you know, job has been very, very busy recently, so I haven't had a lot of time, you know, to work on the channel per se. But anyways, I hope, I really hope that you enjoy the fruits of my labor. I hope that you enjoy all those videos that I'm making out of my time and my sweat because I, from my perspective, I truly enjoy bringing you guys videos and entertainment and some fishing in between. Mainly fishing, right? This is a fishing channel after all. I'm gonna leave you here with the ending from that day. Uh, another video is gonna be coming up soon. Good video where we catch some jumbo ass panfish, all right? <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tide lines, and until next time, fellas. Final update, fellas. We're done here, first day in good old New York. Once again, I'm here with Tim Galati from the Tim Galati YouTube channel and my friend Mike Caruso. You guys can see all three of us, we are tired. It was a, it was a very nice day, but we worked really hard, you know, exploring places and trying to catch different types of fish. Tim did really good with the smallmouth bass. He is laden today. My friend Mike, big accomplishment. He got his first ever walleye, you know, beautiful. And I think for me, it was just a very good experience, you know, to watch someone catch all those fish and learn the techniques. After all, you know, myself, I'm not really experienced, right, with uh, all the smallmouth in this area. So, you know, I got the patterns down, I kind of got the techniques down, the spots, which I'm not giving to anyone, okay? But anyways, you guys get the idea, right? Today was just the first day, tomorrow we're gonna do another day of fishing, it's gonna be a whole new day, we gotta go to new places, hopefully new species, we will see. So stay tuned, it should be good, fellas.